Hi, dear. Hi. It's very nice to interview you for my blog. Um, what is good music for you? Uh, what is good music? This is a um, this is an important question. And uh, well, let's say that I think it's for me very hard to define what is good music out of a specific context because uh, the relationship and the experience that we have with the music depends a lot on the context. I mean, if I am in my car driving 150 kilometers in a forest and listening to something, uh, it's not the same context than if I am, you know, um, in, attending to a concert. Um, if I try to find some common uh, years after years, I, I can say that one of the parameters which could define good music is the quality of the performance. I had, a, I remember I had terrible experience. I'm talking right now about my compositions uh, when uh, I wrote some pieces and they were, it's not that they were badly performed, but that the, the performers didn't really understand what to put there. Uh, and therefore the result was very disappointed for me, but also for the audience. And then some years later, this, this particular piece was performed again by performers who really understood what they had not only to play or to perform, but also what they had to act or to deal with in terms of attitude. So for me, that, that would be a parameter, uh, let's say the adequation uh, between the quality of the performance and the music and what is inside of it. Um, after, it's an interesting question also for me because, uh, as you know, I am since many, many years, including in my compositional practice, the usage of different media, such as video, lights, gesture, and so on. Uh, but still, uh, each time I am composing, uh, I am really asking myself this, this question of the music itself. Uh, could this piece be listened without seeing? And of course, uh, I reach sometimes some very paradoxical situation where uh, if the answer to this would be yes, in this case, what would be the necessity uh, to include video? to include lights or gesture or dramaturgy. Um, they consider that the music process in its entire thing could not really be disconnected uh, in terms of concert from the entire parameters which are there. Uh, I like very much, for example, to ask the musicians uh, to make gestures which are not producing sounds. Uh, but those gestures can produce energy or they can produce a relationship with some other parameters which would be around and which would clarify the entire project. Um, after that, nevertheless, I, I, I must say that because I am also artistic director of a festival since many years and I am trying to remain very widely open about what is going on and to do not apply only my criteria personal to, to what is music, uh, I must say that I can still be surprised and positively surprised by what we would call more pure music, like some, some piece of music which doesn't have any extension. Uh, and I think the main reason of this is the art of time. For me, the, the main thing in music is how to deal with time. And I am fascinated by this, how you can shape the time with the musical process, with the energy, with the flowing acceleration, uh, density, not density, colors, not colors, static, not static. And all of this, when it's uh, crafted well uh, and in a new way, I think I, I like it because I am definitely out of controlling time. And for me, this is something which is very magical and which is definitely 
something which belongs to the musical process very strongly. So uh, yeah, good music is good art of time, plus the performance, uh, yeah, that's it. Yes, yes, good, good, interesting. And, and uh, you mentioned that uh, one of your signatures is, uh, is use different extensions or multimedia, right? Uh, can you tell a little bit about your music uh, or your musical ideas? Well, I would say that they are, um, to understand this, I need to come back quite, uh, quite back in time. Uh, the question of representation, when I finished my studies, I was in Paris and I was about to jump uh, in the professional activity as a composer. And uh, in most of the case, not to say all the cases, I was going to the concerts and I was getting super bored. It was disaster. It, it was really horrible because I could feel a, a huge paradox between what I could hear, crazy stuff, very, you know, energetic or ambitious scores. And in terms of the, uh, what I could see, it, it was extremely archaic, extremely old fashioned, old school. And uh, I couldn't find myself, I couldn't. Uh, so then I, for you know, many, many, many years, I started to experiment uh, and I still consider that I am experimenting in a way uh, towards my recent projects because I, I, I think I will never stop to experiment because this is what is exciting me. Um, not to add something, but to try to, defend, to define a language where different parameters are, let's say, interconnected and creating some kind of multi-layer perceptional uh, project. I was mentioning about time, which is the most important thing for me. And I discovered that when you are using multi-layer uh, perceptional uh, issues, uh, for example, to have a musician, but Next to this musician, there is a video and there is the light, and it can be also in the score itself, some actions like theatrical actions and the usage of electronic, of course, which can extend widely the sounding phenomenon. I discovered that I was able to create uh, a perception in which the time uh, doesn't have the same speed on each layers. And for me, that was really fascinating because I could create some acceleration or some uh, more static point in, in, in one aspect of the, of the project where on the other aspect, things would go further. Uh, so I would say that this is one aspect to define my, my, my activity as a composer. Then there is another one which is very important is the political engagement. I consider myself strongly engaged artist, not necessarily politically, but let's say um, I never thought uh, about myself as a person who is disconnected because of my artistical practice. I hate totally this vision of the artist and um, it can be quite frequent in the composer uh, that you have this impression that the composer are completely out of the world. When you are asking them what they are dealing with, they will talk about harmonies or melody or spectrum or proportions. And though all those things are super important, I'm not putting them aside thing. It's not enough. I need an input, an impulse. And this impulse is coming from an anger uh, I am very angry in a way person uh, concerning my glance of the society, how the world is going on, what is going on around me. And I am using the, the, the music process, uh, the composition process in order to solve it. It's a kind of psychoanalysis in a way, uh, activity, and this is not new at all in the field yes. of art. Eh? A lot of artists are, are using their art in order to solve the problems that they are accumulating in their brain. Uh, so this is the second very important aspect. I need to have a target, uh, a specific subject that I want to deal with in order to start a project. Therefore, for example, I am never starting a piece 
until I will have the title. I can't not. It happened a few times. I said to myself, okay, I will find the title later. And those few pieces are really bad. You know, I don't like them anymore. Uh, and the last, the last thing, uh, the last aspect uh, to define this would be the question of storytelling. Uh, I think that my culture, artistical culture, has been very much influenced by cinema and uh, any type eh, of cinema. I, I mean, you know, I have a, a huge, not, not a huge culture. It's not about this. I don't want to, 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 to feel pretentious. It's not about this, but I watch a lot of movie of any kind, of any period, since, ex, since really, really a lot of years. And, uh, and it has had a very strong impact on me. And I like to tell stories. It doesn't mean story like with a beginning, a middle and the end. And, you know, it doesn't mean this, but I like the process of saying something, of storytelling, uh, to bring the audience from one point to another with a subject one more time, because it enabled me to create multi layers perception. Yes. So this is how I, 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 this is how I work generally. Yes, but uh, what do you mean by multi, um, by multi layers, right? It's, uh, it's some kind of independent uh, streams of, of information or? Well, uh, it, multi layer means that when you face uh, a project, if it's clear, for example, uh, that in this project there is a story or a subject that we are talking about, I don't know, ecology problematic, and with this ecological pro problematic, I will create some character who will tell us in the beginning something about nature, and then in the middle, something about cars and pollution, and at the end, some kind of conclusion. Uh, by doing this, I am creating a first layer of expectation. So I create a dynamic inside of the brain of the listener, uh, of the spectator in a, in a way. And then in the same time, there is another process, for example, which is going on, which is the process of musical action. So this is another layer where the timing is more, let's say, uh, specific and dynamic. And this timing is not necessarily following this main stream. It, it, it has its own logic and yes. the same with the video and the same with the light. So all of those things, the fact that I can at one point synchronize them, which have a, which that desynchronization of all the layers would have a extremely strong in a way impact. Sorry. Uh, th those things will have a very strong uh, impact in terms of uh, perception. Uh, and in another moment, those things st started to start to be disconnected. So because they are disconnected, you are opening much more, you know, potential. You are creating uh, questions in the brain. One more time, spectator. L long time ago, I remember I had a discussion with a, a, a friend, a composer, and uh, I was saying to him, you know, I don't feel that I am a spectral composer or that I am going to saturation. That I, I, I don't feel myself as part of a genre, let's say, or a specific aesthetic. Yes. Uh, but what I like is the concept of active music. The yes. concept that music is creating activity inside of the spectator. So I like very much uh, to create uh, a kind of, you know, intellectual, emotional, um, reflexive, you know, all those layers, and I deal with this. I am assembling, you know, dynamic activi ac active points inside of a project. Yes. Can you give some, uh, an example of your works where this uh, logic applies? Well, the... I think the starting point of this came from a, a project that I made uh, just after my studies. I was 26 years old and it was a musical composition on the film 
by Eisenstein, which is called The Strike. So it's an old film from 1924 by this Russian master, uh, Eisenstein. And, uh, and I was studying a lot the books, the theories uh, by Eisenstein. And Eisenstein was developing one theory, which is called uh, the editing of attractions. Mm -hmm. uh, this is a theory that you can find on the internet, which is very well known by the specialist of editing movies. And in this theory, Eisenstein is explaining that each time he will make some editing point in the film, he's asking himself how to create the highest uh, dynamic level between going from one shooting to another shooting, one plan to another plan. For example, in this film that I studied a lot, of course, because I worked two years on this project, uh, each time Eisenstein is moving from one picture to another, uh, all the parameters are changing. So I will give you a simple example. You can imagine that you see a small animal uh, from quite far away. So let's say two ducks, which are because this is happening in this film. Eh? So you have two ducks which are next to a river and you see them from quite far away. So the subject is duck. Uh, nature, this is what you see in the picture, and in terms of glance, you are quite far. So there is a distance which enable you in terms of perception with this distance to observe something more globally. The next plan will be a very close view of an old man that we see extremely close in the office. So if you analyze those two pictures, everything is changing. In a way, the subject is changing, the way you see it, the environment is changing. So it's a, it's a very simple example, but when you start to think in terms of editing with this, it's extremely exciting because you are able to create constant dynamics in terms of perception. So I started to compose with this kind of thing that I really wanted to work on this. Okay, I am somewhere, this is one part of the, the music. So for example, there is a, uh, I don't know, a, a trio performing something with a, with a video doing this, but the next plan will be extremely dynamic because all the things will change. Suddenly it will be the darkness and we will hear a voice telling us something. And of course, and this is where the, I'm considering myself also as a very classic composer, I like, uh, very much to say this. As composer, we have been trained um, with this development technique. We have a little object in the beginning and we are developing it. So this is typical in spectral music, but also in classical music. If we talk about Beethoven uh, or classical, let's say, development that you have a theme and you are developing it. And I like to do this because what is very nice with this is that you are also dealing with the question of memory. So if I come back to my example that I have this trio performing something with a static video, and then I have a very strong break with the darkness and some voice saying something, and then I have another thing. So I am each time creating a very strong dynamic, but then I will come back to a previous situation. And when I'm coming back to it, I can eventually change one of the layers that I am dealing with. The video will be a little bit different. So I am in a way requiring this coming back inside of the memory, which is creating a, another uh, perception of time because you knew already what happened there, but then it's also changing a little bit. So this is, this is how really I work, you know? I, I, I deal with development of objects, but those, those objects are multi-layers. And therefore, you know, I am able to deal with those dynamical uh, points. And how you came up to use different multimedia, right? And not only write pure music. And what's your story? How yeah, but, well, the, that, that came, you know, naturally because um, as, you, as I was super disappointed it's just not possible to for I will give you an example which is this uh, 
for me, terrible way to start a concert when you see the musicians entering on stage, everybody applauds. Uh, if it's an orchestra or an ensemble, the, the conductor is arriving after and then we are shaking the hand of the conductor. This is totally archaic and, and it's killing everything for the, the, the art. So you are, you are sitting, because you know, we can ask ourselves what we are, are doing, you know, basically in, in our society. Uh, is it still necessary to, to, to produce art? Is it still necessary to go to the concert? And those questions are very important. You know, things are going on so fast and with the extension of the technology and the communication means uh, you know, all, all things are happening online, you know, and this COVID extra was extending very, very strongly this, this thing. So uh, if we still believe that it's uh, important to go to a concert or to go to a theater, let's say, uh, why are we not taking care about this? You know, why? I, I really don't understand, you know. And if you go to theater or contemporary dance, you will not see those kind of things, you know, anymore. You will see maybe some others, eh? but yes. So, um, so, so I mean, for me, it was really a deep necessity to start to work with the lights, to start to work with the video in order to extend the stage and to say, guys, the stage, it's not only a sanctuarium for music where we will see all the time the same musicians wearing black clothes and having their score, you know. And uh, I discovered so much by doing this because suddenly I was starting to discuss with the musicians. The first thing I was asking them when we started to work on a new project, I said, but can you tell me why you are here? And they are, they were looking at me and said, but I'm here to play your music. And I said, but this is not a good answer. You know, I, I need you to know more, to know exactly why you are on stage. Do you have something to say, something to scream, some, something to claim? Because if it's just to perform my music, you can just do it for me and that's it. We don't need audience, you know? And, uh, and for example, that was leading me to the fact that I started to work on some projects where I was asking the performer to play by heart, which is changing completely the relationship in terms of how you perceive a, a piece of music, but uh, it's really fascinating. So generally, piece after piece, year after year, um, I searched and I was one time working with the light, one time working with the video. And I'm trying to do not stabilize, you know, I have some reflex, but I am very afraid about my own classicism. Yes. Uh, I don't like this. When I'm starting to repeat myself, to use the, the same tools or the same things, I'm starting to feel not good. Yes. Uh, well, this is me, you know, this is how I am. I, I, I need this... Uh, emptiness or the fact that I, I don't know where I am going exactly in order to start really a, a project. So um, this, this process came, you know, year after year, step by step. And of course I had to work on this a lot eh? to, to, to learn how to shoot, to learn how to edit, to learn how to deal with the lights. Uh, but it's fascinating. I have no problem with this. It's a lot of work. I'm, I'm, I'm working a lot, yes, but uh, but it's uh, it's nice. Yes, and what's the uh, let's say uh, biggest differences, right? That you as a composer, when you write uh, uh, pure music, right, pure sound, and, and and this multimedia music, right? This is our different principles. I don't know regarding how how complex could be a sound part or how much information you could give only by sound. There are some kind of differences, but you take into your account when you create multimedia piece comparing to pure music piece. Mm -hmm. Well, I, I, I think it's in a way very different and in another way, not that much because I think that a person who is, let's say a composer who would write pure music uh, would also go extremely, can go, let's say very, very deep 
happen very, very far in terms of mental speculation. Um, the fact is that if you put a violin player in the middle of the stage performing pure music, and if you put the same violin player performing music, but next to it, there is a video, and in this video we see, I don't know, a person who is murdered, let's say. The perception will be different. You cannot fight against this. So you have to take this under account and you have to say, okay, uh, you know, if I put video, if I, if, if I have video on stage or if I use the lights, I have to think about it not as a decorum or not as something that will be there just to be nice, which is happening eh, sometimes. I can see some projects where you can definitely see that the video was added later on and you can remove it. It will not change that much. And this I, I really don't like because for me, it's like putting some lipstick, you know, it, it's not because an actress will put or, or an actor will put some lipstick that the text will be better said. Um, <clears throat> so I wouldn't compare because I don't like to compare so much, you know, but for me, if I start to, to, to work on the, on the piece, um, including those extra elements, for example, the, the project that I am working on right now, uh, I'm starting really just starting a, a project for the which we should be performing in two years. I'm taking my notebook and I'm drawing. This is the first thing that I am doing. I'm drawing situation and I'm trying to establish by doing this the relationship, I don't know, between the screen, between the instrument, what in terms of position I can do. Uh, and this is leading me according, of course, to a subject that I decided in advance. This is leading me to some already adjustment and already situation which are you know, sufficient or not sufficient. I say, okay, if I go there, for sure, I will need to compose specific music for this. Or in this situation, I don't even need music. I can just have a sound. Yes. Um, so yes, this is this process is it's very specific, of course. Yes, yes. So as I understand, right? And in this case, this visual part, how it looks stage is very important, and and, and, and the time you, uh, let us say, and, and and you you focus on on visual and all other elements needs time. Then you draw, and then only you create sounds and and and, and videos, etc. Right? So it's some kind of holistic. Holistic approach, how you start, right? With drawings and etc. Yes, because the, yeah, because one more time, I think that silence, silence is one of the most beautiful sound in order to structure music. And I'm saying this because if you take the stage uh, as a entire physical space, and if you start to to think about this, that you can ask a performer just to walk slowly. This is already part of the music because, I mean, you are creating a lot of things by doing this. You are, you are dealing with speed. You know, if, if the character is running, it's not the same at all in terms of perception than if the character is walking slowly. You are dealing with the sound because if there is no music in this moment, but if this character is a violin player and this violin player is already in the position of playing, but not playing, you create an expectation. And this expectation prepares you to receive the sound. So therefore you are already writing music. And this is completely obvious. I mean, John Cage discovered this a long time before me. Eh? Uh, if, if you have this situation where you have a percussionist who has a big drum and the percussionist suddenly raises the end with a lot of energy, at this moment, you already hear the sound. You are preparing yourself to receive the sound. And I like this very much because in a way you can ask this percussionist to just stay there. So what will happen? We were prepared to get the sound, but 
we don't get it. So we start to think, so we are active. And I like this. I very much like this. Yes. So this is how I deal. And as you said, I need to have the vision of what is going on on the stage and to take the characters and to move them. And I know that here in this movement, I need music. I know that here I need more some ambient sound. I know that and progressively I am creating the, the process. But I just want to add a little thing is that sometimes it's also working on the opposite way that by writing music, I realize that I am shaping the space. And yeah. this is something that I discovered later on, but which is also fantastic because one more time, because of the time shaping of the music, you start to create some, I, for example, I will use the word emotions. Uh, if you create a strong emotion, whatever it is, you are suddenly um, changing the vision. It's, it also works like this. If you watch a movie uh, or a theater play, or if you read a book in which suddenly there are a lot of emotions, you will start to do not see what is around. You are in your bed reading a book, and at one point you are so much into the, those emotions which are coming from, from there that you are forgetting about the space. And this is fantastic. So I'm trying to deal with those perceptive fields in a way. Good, good. Uh, so it looks like very, uh, very, let's say, very, dramat uh, let's say, very theatrical approach, right? So, so there is a stage in your, in your head, how you imagine, and then there is a movement, characters, and etc. Completely, well, for example, um, how to deal with the video? You know, the video, it's a, it's a very interesting, and concrete example. Yes. Um, I, I, I can talk, for example, about a, a, a piece for trombone, which is called Outer Space. Yes. And uh, I, I wanted to write a piece for solo trombone because I, I had a commission with a trombonist and the video. And I was immediately asking myself, okay, what is the relationship between the video itself as a space and this character who was a And I was searching for some ideas. So it could be a story which would connect those two things. Uh, it could be energy like colors or things like this. And then I started to draw the trombone player. And I said to myself, okay, if I am asking this trombone player to walk, how will he or she carry this trombone? And then I started to say to myself, okay, it could be fantastic if the, 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 mm -hmm. the trombone, if you take it like this, not like this, yes. if, you, if you put it down, then you see a trombone horizontally, which has this pavilion at the end, and it looks a little bit like a camera like a cameraman in a way. Yes. So I started to say, okay, I have the concept. The, the trombone player will be a cameraman. So it means that the video that we'll see is the result of how the camera is moving left and right. So I, I, I made a video, which is in a way completely absurd. You know, I was in my studio in Toulouse. I, I, I was shooting only the empty space in this space, I was putting a few tables, chairs, in order that you can, because it's a closed studio, so you never know exactly where you are. And I put the camera in the middle and I started to make some movement, left yes. to center, to right and back to center. And then I was asking the musician to play like this, left, center, right, center. So as a result, you see a performer who is making this movement, and back in the back, you see an entire space which is moving exactly synchronized with the gesture. Yeah. Doesn't matter how I manage with the synchronization and so on. This is technical, this is not interesting. But the concept for me was great because it was creating some kind of absurd. Because you, if, you, if you try to think 
It's not possible. We know right. that the trombone is not a camera, but it works in terms of energy. It works very well. Yes. Yes. So I am twisting a little bit the perception and you are entering in some kind of, you know, a little bit esoteric environment, which is, which is interesting for me to deal with. Yes, very good. Uh, and, um, but to understand, right? Uh, so that you start, uh, this is some kind of in the middle, right? The stage when you draw and you, uh, when you draw and, and when you imagine the stage. But there is some stages before, right? So, and, and you said that one of the stages is to, is to, dis, uh, to start to uh, discover title, right? So that, uh, so that maybe you can t tell about what happens before, right? So, so I don't know. You came idea, you work on, you work, you, you, you gather information, you came to the title and, and, and then after the title, then you create this, uh, this, let's say, scene. Well, uh, is, uh, yes, yes, yes. Uh, I, I think it's a, yeah, it's, it, it's a process uh, which is, including a lot of different stages. Some of them are subconscious. I am not aware because they are working by themselves uh, in the dreams or simply in the subconscious, you know? And uh, one more time, um, let's be honest. I think we are living in a very violent and brutal society. Yes. This is my conviction. Uh, this world is crazy. Uh, the values which have been, let's say, defined by the uh, neoliberal uh, environment are horrible, simply uh, by our attitude of consumption, uh, constant consuming. We are also killing and destroying the planet. Um, so, you know, it's it's very brutal, you know, and it's, it's extremely hard sometimes to know basically what to do, you know, yes. what can I eat? Uh, what can I drink? They are saying to me that I shouldn't eat uh, animals, but in the other hand, everybody has shoes which are made with uh, animals or cosmetics which are made with animals, you know, it's fucking mess, you know, to, 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 to try to just stay a little bit stable. Um, there is also extra, uh, a, a real violence inside of people because, you know, the tension that our world is creating is extremely hard to manage. I have a son who is 20 years old, so I, 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 I see him growing up and this generation, come on, it's a disaster for them. They, they grew already with the Facebook there, you know, they had the Facebook when they were born. Not exactly, but when yes. they started to be at this age that they can use uh, technologies. And, uh, and I mean, you know, all, all of the question of identity, who I am, you know, with the pressure of the society. When, when you need constantly to have likes on Google, you know, you need to, to be liked by everyone. It's absurd. This is ridiculous. Sorry to, be, to, 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 to tell more about this, but I think this is, if you ask me from where I'm starting a project, this is from there, from, yes. from, from this, this, this kind of big mess. And at one point I am taking one thing and I'm saying, okay, let's talk about this, about communication problem. Uh, let's talk about ecological problems. Um, right now, for example, you know, I, 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 I'm starting to, to work on a new project and, and uh, I was recently a little bit pissed off by an obsession of hygiene, yes. of, of this clean thing. A lot of people are, are talking uh, about this, you know, that we need to be careful, we need to be clean, we need to be, you know, and, uh, and I'm saying to myself, but where are we going, you know, because it's completely a, a paradox between what we are victimized by the technologies, you know, the technologies are super dirty. It's super dirty. I mean, this environment, uh, this utopia that we are uh, super connected and so on, this is a disaster. So I decided to investigate the subject of dirty, you know, yes. is it not also great to be a little bit 
to, I don't know, you know, talking about drugs, about alcohol, to, to do not be polite, you know? And, uh, and so this is the, what I am working on. So I'm starting to dig, you know, about the subject of unpoliteness uh, with a sense of humor, uh, with the fact, you know, there is also one thing that I get from a lot of programmers, which is this participative uh, new trend. You know, we have to, we would have as artists to create projects in which the audience could participate. And I saw some, I saw some result of this by artists who didn't, okay, they, they just accept, you know, and it, for me, it was a failure. Like, you know, in the middle of a show, you are taking the microphone and say, guys, do you remember in the beginning of the show, we were giving you little plastic bag. And so now all of you will make a nice noise and we will dance on this noise. This is terrible. I mean, you know, the simple fact of going to a concert hall, you are active. If you accept to be there, if you accept to lose the time, to lose your consciousness of your everyday life, you are basically active. That's enough. You don't yeah. need to go on the stage. So, uh, yeah, this is this kind of this, this kind of info that I can get from the newspapers, or you know, I'm reading a lot of newspapers since always. I like to to read newspaper more than to follow the news on internet, which I don't trust so much how they are canalized because I know that I, they are analyzing what I am looking at. So at one point it's a restrictive yes. environment. So at the end. I get only the little info that I was checking the days before. When I buy the, the, the journal, you know, uh, I can get news from everywhere and I like it. So this is how it works. And then I think that my subconscious is also dealing with this. And then I started to get a title appearing like this, you know, and I start to work. Yes, got it. And um, now I will ask you two questions from composers, but th those questions was asked to, to every interview. Um, first is from Simon Steen Anderson. Um, what do you fear as composers the most? What I fear? Yes, as composer. As a composer. Um... Well, I fear that I will lose my freedom because I, I, I am definitely free. I want to stay free. And, uh, and when I'm saying I fear that I will lose my freedom, <clears throat> it can be a war, let's say, yes. that I will be just, say, just obliged to just run away, to hide, and not therefore not to compose. But it can be also much more, let's say, tricky <clears throat> that I will lose my freedom because, I don't know, for example, because of success. Yes. I have success. I want to be successful. Then I am starting to be obsessed by this success. And I do all the time the same. I'm, lose, I, I'm losing my freedom. A lot of artists in the history of art uh, have to face this. And uh, for me, the great ones were the ones who were always um, reconsidering their own practice. Mm -hmm. So yeah, this is my fear, to lose the freedom. Yes. Uh, second question is from Francois Charan. And his question is, why you still compose? Why I still compose? Uh, do I have a choice? I, I don't think I have the choice because uh, uh, I create uh, I create total dependency. I am totally addicted. Like it's like a drug, you know, or alcohol. Uh, I'm not saying that I am work alcoholic. Yes. It's not about work, but it's more about my my balance. And I can tell you. Um, Another reason is that my head, I am 50 years old. So it means that, let's say, since not maybe 50 years, but at least 40, I am inputting sounds in my head, pictures in my head. And I have an, obs an obsession about memory. So because of this, I have this impression sometimes, you know, that 
my head is not big enough uh, to contain all those things, to, to keep them active, to keep them alive. So I am developing, not developing because it's more intuitive, but I am making a lot of classification. If you would see my studio, I have everything is archived properly, but properly for me, like, I don't know if you know this French writer with name Georges Perec, uh, who was working a lot. He, he wrote a book which is called Think Classify, Pensée yeah. Classé, which is a fantastic book about this, how you manage to keep thinking by classifying the other thing to feel secure. So basically my creative process is also to archive, to do the archives of my own projects. I like to spend time on this. I like it very much. I finish project, I will come to all the process. I will make some archives. I will put this, you know, very clean. But then I am ready to open a huge mess again, like the workshop of Francis Bacon. You know, if you know Francis Bacon, photos, uh, when we see where he was working, it was a huge mess. And I need this mess when I'm starting a project. And then I put this mess, you know, in little boxes, I put stickers on it, and then my brain is able to start a new mess. Good, good. And um, looking back, let's say 10 years, right? How your music changed? Compared to 10 years ago, you mean? Yes. I, I well, on one hand, I think it didn't change so much in terms of uh, being experimental, searching, accepting failure. Um, right now, assuming um, much more that if I get a commission for, I don't know, 15 minutes string quartet, I will not accept. I would say, guys, it's not for me. I'm sorry, you know, I, I don't have enough time in front of me, you know, maybe in 20 years it will be done, you know, I will be 70, I will be too tired. So now I want to focus only on projects which, in which I have time to develop things uh, and uh, where I can really find this freedom. Yeah. And it's difficult, you know, I'm, I'm very often giving this example uh, when I'm talking, when I'm making workshops with some young, young uh, musicians about Stockhausen who was writing this, uh, this string quartet with helicopter. Yes. Uh, the, come on, you are just waking up and you are saying, ah, I have the idea for the string quartet. I will put them in the helicopters. What to do? I am not Stockhausen far away, you know, um, and I think also the world has changed a lot in the context of contemporary music. It's not that easy uh, compared to the 70s, where the artists were maybe a little bit more recognized or identified. Now it's total mess, you know, it's go super fast. But still, I'm saying to the students, guys, you need to still dream about the, the, the helicopters. If you wake up and you say, I want to write a symphony for five submarines and 20 orchestra, just do it, find a way to do it. You have the video to do this, or you, you can just say it. That would be a great piece. You yes. just enter on stage of a philharmonic and you tell the story about this piece that you cannot write because you cannot have the, the, the submarines, but you tell it. And, yes. and, and this storytelling is already an act of art. So, um, <clears throat> yeah. And uh, how much technology influence your works? Well, technology for me is a, it's a tool. So it's, it's like a violin, you know, violin, it's technology, you know, it's you just have, insane technological. Object. Yes, do you have some, sorry? I don't, do you have some, your own tool, your own built tool, you know, program programmed software or Maybe it's a technological tool which you use mo most frequently? Um, I think, to be honest, that in, the, in this process of being a composer, uh, I am more and more 
trying to focus on the most important things. Yes. Uh, so I would say that maybe during the 15, 21st uh, years of my activities as a composer, I developed indeed some softwares, uh, mainly in the Max MSP Jitter program. Yes. Uh, which were, so, for example, some personal sampler because I, I like this type of results. Uh, I developed also some way of using Pro Tools, which is my main sound editor. Uh, and I am probably using it in a very, let's say, personal way. Now I am uh, less and less interesting, interested in finding some, uh, in spending time in developing. I think I have tools which are, let's say, already very powerful yes. and uh, I, I am not running after finding new tools. I am more enjoying to use those tools and to search with those tools even more. Right. I remember, I, yeah, I, I, very quickly, but I remember an interview from a, a Soulage, the French painter, who was uh, working at the end of his life, he's still alive, eh? but he's very old, he's 100 years or 101. Um, and uh, he was working with just black colors, black, just a pot of black color. And he said, Jesus, I am, I am walking in this black mud since days and days, but I'm sure that I will still find something with it. And, and he was 70, 75 when he was doing this. So for me, I am more entering in the phase of my life where I really want to dig and use and just, you know, push the things that I have. Nevertheless, you know, uh, I can still search. You know, I made a project last year with the IRCAM and we were developing some specific softwares for this project. So I enjoy it still. Eh? Yes, yes. So, so, so you are, you as a composer, you, you, you call this film, yes? You program. Sorry, it was, it was broken. Yeah, you as a composer, so you have- Can you repeat the question? Control, yes, to write the software. And so you have uh, some, some coding skills as well. Well, I studied uh, in the conservatoire in Lyon, where I was trained to program a lot, especially in different languages, mm -hmm. but I, I was not keeping programming in all of, all of those languages, but I'm still using Max MSP as an environment that I like very much, that I know. So yes, I am programming, but not at a very high level. You know, yes. I am trying to do not be also, um, too much influenced by the technology. Yes, Technologies right. can be very dangerous. It's a tool. So I have a tool, I deal with this. Okay, if I am not programming in the new way, not using the last plugin and so on, doesn't matter. Yes, well, and uh, uh, looking back, right, uh, this century, right, or let's say last 20 years, you, you as a composer, what you see, what kind of changes happen in new music? Theory? It become how mu how music change or how music community change or how music landscape change. Well, well due to this uh, due to this question, uh, twenty years ago, I felt very isolated in my field. You know, saying that the composer is using a, a video real time processes gesture theatrical approach. I mean, in France, we were really not a lot, for example, eh, in France, 20 years ago, who was doing this, you know? We were three, four, maybe, you know, five. Uh, and I see that now, now, nowadays, because of some figures, you know, had emerged, eh? uh, Alexander Schubert, Stine Anderson, Francois Saran, to talk about people of, let's say, more or less my generation or a little bit younger, uh, but new, new composers, uh, emerge, of course, and they are fantastic and a lot of great artists that I can see arriving, you know, in the network. And for them, uh, the usage of video technologies, it's 
completely normal, it's natural. So I am very happy about this because, you know, sometimes I, I get some calls from a very young composer who are saying to me, oh, you, you are the granda of the yes. music and technology. I say, sorry to be a granda, you know, I am only 50 guys. I am not dead, eh? yeah. I will still work. But, uh, but it's, 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 it's very nice that finally, you know, I see that those issues are not treated as exotic anymore. You know, it's not exotic anymore. It's, it's inside of the, the potential. It doesn't mean that it needs to be like this, not at all. Eh? As I said, I am not dogmatic. Eh? But for me, this is the biggest change, yeah. Yes, yes, that is. And, and, and uh, how you see how music audience changed? Last 20... Uh, uh, this is another question, you know, for this... I, uh, uh, when I started, as I said, eh, I, I always had as another activity being a programmer for festival or creator for events. Because I think that it's, it's super nice and more than being a teacher, you know, I choose this, this path to program or to organize events. I was learning a lot by doing this. Uh, I am a little bit disappointed because when I started this, I was really convinced. I was saying to myself, OK, in 20 years, for example, the audience of opera houses or orchestra, which will have changed because we will have been strong enough, we composers, uh, to fight, to be there, to show that, you know, there is a bridge between classical music and contemporary music, but that, you know, uh, this bridge means to be super open to many other disciplines that, you know, basically we are interested in art. And this is a failure totally. I mean, there are still a lot of, a lot. There are still some audience which is going to classical concert halls or classical opera houses, and they don't see the point to connect this with what we are doing. And I was reading on your blog, the interview of Sarah, I think, Nemstov. Yes. And she says something which is absolutely true. I completely agree with her that right now, the audience for new music is maybe coming from many different networks, which can be plastical art, video art, why not cinema? Uh, so I think this is interesting moment where, you know, I am older than Sarah and, and she's observing through her perspective. And I am observing also with the fact that when I was 25, I said to myself, I can manage to change this, you know, and I didn't manage. Yes. What, I, what I managed to do is to maybe to open the doors of the contemporary music theater in a way to those other fields. Yes. So this is what is, yeah, this is what is changing, I think, right now. Yes. And um, um, what kind of future trends you can observe now, right? Where music is going, right? It will be more technological and more decolonization, let's say, this decolonization. Uh, perspective? Well, for me, uh, so far, so far, eh? because I, I don't want to say things which could appear as a truth. I hate yes. this, I don't like. Eh? But so far, I think we still need uh, uh, the physical presence, even with avatars, even with uh, reconsidering completely the, the shape of the concert, uh, which could be an installation, which could be something which would happen for 20 hours instead of, you know, 20 minutes. But we still need uh, this physical connection. Um, so I would say that in what I can start to observe, in terms of changes is the fact that we can uh, enter in Nero um, can take place anywhere it can take 
place in museums, it can take place outside, it can take place, of course, in theater. But you know, a lot of spaces can be proper. And yeah. I am sure that um, if I would if I would propose a commission to a composer saying to this composer, sorry, you will not have a string quartet in the theater, but you will have 10 musicians in an entire building where people are living. This is the project. This is what I give you. And that would work fantastic. I, I'm sure that a lot of composers would enjoy this perspective that they have a building with family living inside and they have 10 musicians or electronics or whatever, and they can work on this, you know, some kind of installation, but being part of life and so on. And for me, this is very exciting that yeah. we can explode completely the sanctuarium of the concert hall. I don't believe anymore in the concert hall as the only place for the music. It's done. It's it's over. Yes, I, uh, I very much like uh, okay, uh, uh, this idea. Uh, very much. Uh, maybe last question for the first part. Uh, what is your opinion? What is uh, the role of new music in society? Well, it's, uh, you know, it's mm -hmm. as simple as the, the role of art. Eh? I am not disconnecting uh, the other arts and new music on, on the side. Eh? For me, the, it's the role of art in general. So the role of art is to be uh, subversive, to change our perception of the reality, uh, to put ourselves on the edges, to disturb us, uh, to make us feel uncomfortable and joyful in the same time. Uh, and to uh, fight against standard standardization, uh, to fight against uh, um, all the things which we can observe that anything is an object to be to be sell. So music is an object to be sell. Ob obviously, you know, music business is existing everywhere, and art has to fight against this. To say, guys, okay, you want to sell music. But I can I can still be there with something that we can still call music and that you cannot just sell. You have to just go there, digest it, and uh, deal with this. The, the, the selling aspect is not the most important. Um, yeah, this is what I would say. The role of art in general, and there are a lot of extra roles, eh? but for me, the those one are the most important. Thank to, you. To, to put, yeah. Okay. Okay. Thank you very much for first uh, for first part.